this video shows you how to drill through metal brackets and as well as how to install your TV bracket onto your television and then subsequently onto your TV stand. And on the parts list or bill of materials, we've got self tap screws, plastic anchor, square washers, plastic sleeves and screws. M5, M6, M8 screws, depending on what screws your television requires. And here we've got two bracket rails that go to the back of your telly. Screwed on into them four positions with your bolts, your square washer and your washers. So basically screwing bolts into the holes at the back of the TV panel to install each monitor bracket. I have set the lever on the ratchet to the anticlockwise position you know, in order to tighten the TV stand support frame, you know, pretty much where the bracket and the wall plate sit in together. And so the next stage of the process would be to install the wall plate onto the black part or components that sat on the floor. And to do that, we'd need to ensure that they've got matching holes. And once the wall plate has been fastened onto the black bracket component, you know, we'll slide that into the slot head cylindrical pipe that you see on the TV support and so this is the underneath of the support you know but it stays in a vertical position into the TV stand okay you know when tightening bolts on the TV support stand or the back of your television you know just make sure you're picking the right sockets and you know ratchet socket sizes differ and so one of the varying sizes of you know the sockets should fit you know the head size of your bolt okay the next step of the process would be to drill um, hole sizes in your wall plates, you know, to match your TV stand bracket. So first, map out the holes using a pencil, you know, on the TV bracket. So you can identify the holes that need drilling. Center punch the holes before you start drilling. So that the centrifugal action of the drill doesn't spin the drill bit off. And, you know, to save yourself on time, quality and cost, you know, do not use your wooden bits, your masonry bits or your high speed steel bits. To drill through metal, use your cobalt jobber drill set, okay, to drill through metal. It makes your life a lot more easier. You'd get through the metal bit in no time. As opposed to using your conventional drill bits, you know, to drill through metal, um, where you run the risk of, you know, damaging the carbon brushes in your drill due to excessive wear and tear, damaging your drill bit or your drill bit snapping, damaging your component aesthetically due to misdrilling or using the wrong drill bit, with the quality compromised, as well as cost of the material, as well as losing out on time where you've been drilling for protracted periods without get getting anywhere. So it's important that you use or utilize the right drill bits, okay, which is a cobalt, okay? So first, ensure that your wall plate is clamped, you know, at both ends. Make sure that you've marked out the holes that you want to drill. And then subsequently, centre punch, you know, the wall plate holes that you want to drill through. And once you're done with the prepping, you know, pre-drill the holes first before you open up the holes with the larger sized drill bit. So in this case, I will be drilling it off with a size 3, you know, pre-drilling with a size 3 before I open the hole up with a size 6. So first, insert your drill bit size 3 into the chock of your drill, okay? Secure it in, into position. Ensure that it's sat perpendicular to the chock of the drill at 90 degrees, okay? If it's not, realign it, okay? Because if your drill bit isn't sat in the chock properly, if it's not, you know, at this right at the centre, you could snap your drill bit when drilling through metal, okay? Or any other piece of material. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, a cobalt drill bit. If it's your HSS, your wood bits, or your masonry bit, you could snap your drill bit, okay? Ensure the knob on the right hand side is facing down, and you squeeze on the trigger, and that, you know, starts drilling. Set the button to 2 if you're drilling and to 1 if you're screwing, okay, but we're drilling so we need to set the button to 2. And you can twist this knob to auto or you can set it to you manually drill, okay. It's pretty much up to you how you want to work through the process. You don't need the hammer drill, okay, you're not drilling through concrete, okay. Like I said at switch 2, you're drilling through, okay, and that's what we need, okay. Also make sure that when you're drilling through your holes, you drill at a 90 degree angle. Don't, you know, slant the drill when you're drilling through, okay? 
and once you're done you know with the pre-drilling of holes you change the um, drill bit you know from a size three to a size five four or six depending on you know the relative um, speed at which you want to open up your holes okay basic idea is that if you want to open up a larger hole you know start progressively from a smaller hole to a to a mid hole and to a larger hole okay and so you can see I've chosen to go progressively from a size 3 to size 4 and now to a size 6, okay? And that's the um, progress or the rate at which I prefer to um, drill out them holes or open up them holes. Switching speeds for drilling and screwing in walls and wood are not exactly set in stone. You would normally drill with a 2 and screw with a 1. But this hypothesis doesn't exactly hold when it comes to drilling through metals as we use both switching speeds 1 and 2. For drill bits greater than 6.5mm or quarter of an inch, use speeds 1, which is a much slower speed. And for smaller drill bits, you know, utilise or vary the speed to a switch 2, which is a much faster speed, okay? So, when drilling with any of the drill bits from 1.5mm to 5.5mm, I would be utilising the switching speed 2, which is a much faster speed for anywhere between 1.5 to 5.5, and for the 6 or 6.5mm and greater, or quarter inch and greater, I would be utilising or varying the speed to 1, okay, which is a much slower speed. I haven't got cotton oil to dip you know, the drill bit in, so I'd be improvising or utilising the hydraulic fluid, which is a cooling, soothing lubricant and also a power transfer device. For drill bits greater than 6mm or 6.5mm, you should vary your speed to switch 1. Using switch 2 essentially means that your drill bit spins a lot faster there is increased friction as it takes off the metal profile your drill bit gets really soft and you ruin your drill bit so especially for larger drill bits of more than six mil you know lubricate the drill bit drill at 90 degrees and push down hard you can apply the cotton oil to the metal piece and the drill bit as well okay we use setting one to drill larger drill bits because it's low speed and high torque the lesser the speed, the lesser the friction, the lesser the heat. The more the speed, the more the spinning, you know, the more the heat transferred to the drill bit and that could ruin your drill bit, okay? So here, I have clamped the wall plate at both ends as well as having mapped out certain holes that I want to drill through. I have opened up two holes already to 6mm but I want to show you how I drill them. So. At first, I will be piloting one of them holes, you know, with a 3mm drill bit. I have also run it back, you know, from one end of the vice clamp to the other end to capture all of the chips, you know, that come off, you know, the metal plate whilst drilling, but you don't need to do this, okay? And like I said, I've marked out certain positions, you know, off of the um, TV bracket onto the wall plate. For the pilot hole 3mm drill bit, vary the speed to 2 and press on the knob, you know, to the side downwards so that the drill bit spins downwards, okay? As opposed to spinning in the opposite direction. So even when you've got it on the high speed top 2 setting, you know, squeeze on the trigger gently and push the drill downwards with a gentle force whilst, whilst drilling through the metal. And so at this stage, I'm squeezing on the trigger gently and I'm pushing down really lightly and you can see I've got like a powdery form coming off you know the the um, wall plate and as I start to push you know slightly harder you know slightly forcefully you know towards the uh, the, the wall plate you start to see chips emanating from the um, drilled hole push down and squeeze on the trigger a little bit more to get more chips out of the um, the wall plate and you know straight through I've managed to pilot drill me hole when you're getting the drill out, you know, from the hole, make sure that knob is switched onto the opposite direction, which indicates, you know, an upward movement. So that your drill bit doesn't get jammed in the hole and it doesn't split or break. The next step would be to select the 6mm um, larger sized um, drill bit. And I can just about work out the final hole size by latching, you know, this screw onto the um, drill bit and just try trying to work out, you know, what the actual hole size is because the screw will be going through the hole, okay? 
the screw and the drill are just about six mil so i'm quite confident that i've got the right drill bit size okay so i've chopped that into the chock of the drill and i'll be drilling through the pallet sized hole i have varied the speed to um one which essentially is for for this larger size drill bit so essentially i'm drilling through a heavy gauge called rolled steel okay so if my drill bit gets you know slightly um hot I'd, i would be using you know the hydraulic fluid to cool it down apply more pressure so that it chips away at the um um hotter metal profile so that as i push down with more force my cobalt um drill bit you know um, chips a bit more at the cooler steel profile as opposed to you know the hotter steel profile so essentially low speed high torque um, push down um, lesser friction and if you get some hydraulic or cooling lubricant you know onto your drill bit and it's smoky or quite hot then you need to press down a lot more further or harder against the um, cold rolled steel and as you can see, I'm opening up the 3mm pre-drilled hole size to the final hole size, which is 6mm. Um, okay, that shows that my chuck is slightly loose, so I'll tighten it, make sure it's perpendicular. You know, switch on the, um, the knob, you know, in the opposite direction, then get out, you know, the drill bit. And so you can see the chips from the first, second and third hole. I've got a couple of more holes to do, but you get the hang of it, don't you? But if I decide to use my wood bit or my high spilled drill bit, I'd get a totally different result. So here, I will be piloting with a 3mm HSS steel bit. So I will be running this HSS bit through one of the three off holes here. And if you're drilling through and your drill bit seems wobbly, it means that it's not been set properly in the chock. You know, drill at 90 degrees and if it's wobbly, take the um, drill bit out and reset, you know, the drill bit in the chock. And you know, despite readjusting the drill bit in the chuck, it's still wobbly. There's little or no traction with regards to drilling through the hole, so you could be here forever. So I can't stress it enough, it is really important to use the right drill bit to drill through metal or steel. But see how easy it gets once we switch to um, a 3mm cobalt drill set. Vary the speed to switch to, squeeze on the trigger and almost immediately we get traction, and, you know, chipping away from the um, steel surface or the profile and we get our drilled hole. Repeat and reproduce the process, you know, swap the 3mm for a 6mm and open up the hole. But remember to vary the speed to switch 1. Push down and squeeze gently on the trigger, okay? And keep drilling till we open up our final hole size. And if your screw or bolt doesn't fit inside, you know, get the drill bit back in there and, you know, drill around the sides of the hole. Repeat and reproduce the process for other subsequent holes and with time you will develop the skills required to drill through. You can drill from the underside of the bracket to give it a rounded, fine finish. Repeat as required for the other holes so that you do not have like, you know, chip bits hanging from the underside. Take the wall plate from the vise and test to see if your screws, you know, fit in through them holes. And that's pretty much all them six holes drilled in their respective locations. And so the holes on the wall bracket matches the, the, you know, the TV stand bracket and that is what we want, okay? The next step of the process would be to install the tilting TV wall mount. So here I will be installing the TV bracket onto the wall plate, install the monitor bracket onto the back of the television and then subsequently install the assembled telly and monitor bracket onto the wall plate that sits on the TV stand. So in the accessories they've included a myriad of M5, M6 and M8 bolts that you could utilize. You don't need to use all of them. So I will be utilizing an M8 bolt, which M8 stands for the diameter and 40 mil stands for the length of the bolt that I require to fit at the back of my television. And so in this scenario, we will not be installing them plugs into the wall in columns B, as we're not wall mounting, we're only mounting onto the TV stand which we've drilled through. If you don't have the right size bolts from columns E to H, then you can pop into your local store like tool station and they should be able to sort you out, okay? So the first bit would be to install the wall plate onto the TV bracket with nuts and bolts, okay? We've got a spirit level that helps you determine if, it, if it's level. So we'll slot this into the TV stand. 
If we were installing onto the wall, we would have used the plugs in columns B and drilled through the wall using a stored metal pipe and cable detector. On all of the wall plate's four corners, click on the link in the description to see how to use a stud finder. But since we're installing, you know, just onto the TV mount, we will be installing the monitor brackets at the back of the television. Utilizing the square washer, you know, and the washers in column C, and you know, the emit bolts that we've retrieved from the um, local store, which is an emit 40 bolt. M8 stands for the diameter and the 40 mil stands for the length of the bolt. To work out the bolt diameter and its length, refer to the TV manual. And here you can see that for the 43 inch television, what's required is an M8 bolt that's 40 mil in length. And these are the original TV washers that go between the back of the television and the monitor bracket. Them original TV washers do not require a square washer, okay? In this video, we will be utilizing the aftermarket washers, okay, that do require the, the square washer. And you can see that the aftermarket washers are, are quite smaller than the original one. So that's between the back of the telly and the monitor bracket. Not use a drill to drill, you know, the screw down because if you have used the wrong size bolt to mount the monitor bracket, you could damage, you know, your television screen or crack it if the bolt is too long. Here we've got the M830 and the M845, one's too short and the other is too long. Suffice to say, the shot up bolt would not fit properly to the back of the television and the longer bolt will require more washers. As you can see here, the M845 mil bolt will not screw all the way down to the back of your television. Do not use your drill to screw down the bolt, you know, use like a ratchet. This is just for demonstration purposes. Do not use your drill, otherwise you might crack the screen. And as you can see, the fit is wobbly. So that tells me I haven't used the correct size bolt, but if I want to go ahead to use the M845 mil bolt, I will need more square washers, okay? And so like I said, we're not using the original washer, we're using the aftermarket washer. But this time around, I have purchased, or I have in my bill of materials, an M8 bolt that's 40 mil in length and 8 mil in diameter. So first, I will install the aftermarket washer between the monitor bracket and the back of the telly, okay? With some additional washers to cushion the effects of the gap, okay, if there is any. So I will be reducing or increasing the washers depending on the gap that's left out when I torque tighten, you know, the hex bolt or the M8 40mm bolt with a ratchet. So first, I will torque tighten the hex bolt down with my hands, you know, to save me on the number of turns I wound the ratchet on. And that's a zoomed up view of the M8 bolt. So basically, at this stage, I have installed the bracket rail onto the back of the telly. I have screwed four bolts into the holes at the back of the TV panel to install each monitor bracket. And I have also made sure that the distance from each bracket to the top of the TV panel is equal. And also, as center as possible, the bolts, the washers and the sleeves were selected according to the dimensions of the holes in the back of the TV panel. So I have taken a closer look and it's not equidistant, okay, and it's not properly centered. If the bolt installation is not equidistant from the top, you know, I've got like six holes here, reduce the, the number of size holes to five. So I've got six, reduce it to five and reinstall with your ratchet, okay. Select your extension, select your socket, get out your ratchet and, you know, torque tighten the bolts, you know, to the back of the television, okay? You would not be needing an extension in this case, you know, the, the bolt is not far reaching. You can use just your socket and your ratchet, okay? Set the lever on the ratchet to anti-clockwise to torque tighten, you know, the bolt to the back of the telly. And you can hear the silent line of travel, you know, of the ratchet is in the clockwise orientation, which indicates that it's top tightening the bolt. 
the rattling noise in the anti-clockwise orientation or line of travel isn't what tightens the bolt it's the silent line of travel that tightens the bolt and that's in the clockwise orientation you know using the ratchet you know gives you ample opportunity to um to stop tightening the bolt okay just make sure you're not tightening or over tightening the bolt to to an extent where it damages or cracks your screen okay so just take it easy don't force it okay the next step would be to mount the telly and the bracket rail or the monitor bracket onto the wall plate that we've got here installed into the tv stand you can see the wall plate mounted onto the bracket and slotted into the tv stand so here i'm hanging the two monitor brackets onto the wall plate then i'd relax my hand until they are caught hold of okay once the mounted brackets have keyed into the wall plate, you know the next step would be to fix the two bolts underneath the monitor brackets inside of the wall plate and then screw them down. And you can see that the installation is slightly skewed or slanted and that's because you know the distance from each bracket to the top of the TV panel isn't equal. And like I said, reduce the number of hole sizes from six to five. So I'm gonna do that and you'd see that you know it's gonna have a more seamless and pristine look or you know it you know fitting properly. So always visually inspect and if it's not aesthetically looking you know correct you know just make sure that you know the brackets are equidistant you know from the top of the tv panel okay so uninstall the television assembly change the orientation or the distance of travel of the bolt from the top of your telly make sure it's equidistant make sure it's centered and you should see a change okay in the way it looks aesthetically always do a visual inspection okay and as you can see, I've moved the position of the bracket rails and you can see I've got like five holes here, okay, instead of, instead of six as before, okay, and it's looking more equidistant, it's looking more centered. I've also installed the two bolts that enables me to adjust the angle of the panel TV between minus 12 and plus 12 degrees to a suitable position. And when I proceed to mount the assembled telly with it, bracket reel or monitor bracket it should you know be well centered it should look aesthetically pleasing and it should look well centered and equidistant from the top of the tv panel these two rotating bolts at the side of the monitor bracket or bracket rail allows a minus 12 and plus 12 angled rotation and you can see you know i've mounted it back onto the wall plate and it looks well centered aligned and in the right position it doesn't look like it's slanted and so now i'll proceed to screw down you know them bolts so here you can use the drill to screw down them two bolts under the monitor bracket inside of the wall plate you know screw them down with the drill to screw down them two bolt set the drill speed to the one position and once fully secured you've got your tv successfully mounted and that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.